From Washington, the McLaughlin Group, the American original. For over three decades, the sharpest minds, best sources, hardest talk. Issue one, GOP 2015, the fifth debate. Sparks flew in Las Vegas Wednesday as Republican presidential hopefuls held their fifth debate. Moderated by CNN's Wolf Blitzer, the primetime debate involved Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, Ben Carson, Jeb Bush, Carla Fiorina, Chris Christie, Rand Paul, and John Kasich. The undercard debate involved Mike Huckabee, Rick Santorum, Lindsey Graham, and George Pataki. But the real story of the night was the showdown between GOP frontrunners Donald Trump and Ted Cruz. Trailing Mr. Cruz in the key caucus state of Iowa, Mr. Trump went on offense. Who was the most aggressive in this debate? Uh, I think uh, Rand Paul was the most aggressive, John. If you talk about somebody, he came out as a the libertarian he basically is. He made the real case against Chris Christie, saying this guy is going to lead us into World War III. I think there were other aggressive folks there as well. But you know, John, the key question to come out of this debate is the real division in the Republican Party over the no-fly zone in Syria, which would involve the United States shooting down Syrian planes over Syrian territory and shooting down Russian planes in Syria. And you got the Hawks, Jeb Bush is there, Chris Christie is there, Kasich is there, and one of the others is there. And Trump and Cruz, the front runner, are very much for keeping Assad in power and not letting uh, ISIS get there. So you got a tremendous division in foreign policy in the Republican Party, and it really revealed itself, I think, in what I thought was an excellent, exciting, and sometimes <laughs> <laughs> debate that got out of control. Well, you have a lot of shades of toughness, and if uh, Rand Paul wasn't there, you really wouldn't have had uh, the dovish side, if, if you will. Um, I don't think the debate changed uh, the shape of the race, but I think it does clarify where some of the candidates are. And I think it's Donald Trump and it's, it's Ted Cruz and it's Rubio who are kind of socking away at each other. But if you ask me who the most aggressive was in the debate, I would say Jeb Bush because mm -hmm. he's the only one who really took it to Trump. And we're so used to Jeb as kind of the gentle giant and kind of uh, mm -hmm. losing in the in the encounters with, with Trump and sort of backing off. And he got one of the lines that lingered the morning after, which is you can't uh, insult your way to the presidency, Donald. Uh, and um, for a moment, uh, Trump even looked uh, flustered. And we've been commenting here sitting on the set about the facial expressions that, that Trump has which, when the camera cuts to him. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, 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 he looks like someone who is beginning to adjust to the fact that he might not win this thing. And he basically said that uh, he will support the nominee and said he respects them. And it, so I thought it was a much more congenial evening than anybody anticipated. Yeah, well, I think one of the interesting things that came out of this certainly is that also Ted Cruz now taking on Marco Rubio. And I, I think mm -hmm. what R Cruz's strategy is, is that he expects ultimately Trump will fall away. I mean, he requires that inherently to some degree. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, that Trump's supporters will gravitate towards Cruz. And they're very noticeable not wanting to challenge Trump and that sort of reciprocity they had, but very aggressively taking on Rubio as the sort of perceived est establishment candidate, which is another factor that mm -hmm. again suggests that Cruz is trying to buck that trend and get on the sort of Trump horse. But again, you know, I think it's probably too little too late for Jeb Bush, unfortunately for him, because I think he, you know, it, it's, it's good to have a civil uh, person in the debate. And but, you know, Chris Christie, I think one final interesting point is that Chris Christie, I think, was trying to certainly steal some of Jeb's establishment thunder and trying to come in there mm -hmm. as the sort of governor alternative to the Rubio senator on the establishment. So as it gets closer, you see these the, the end game strategies materializing. And I think that's why it made it much more of an interesting dynamic debate. OK, mm -hmm. no fly zone. I think if you're in favor of World War Three, you have your candidate. If we announce that we're going to have a no-fly zone, and others have said this, Hillary Clinton's also for it, it is a recipe for disaster. It's a recipe for World War III. We don't need to confront Russia from a point of recklessness that would lead to war. Who was Rand Paul referring to, and is he right, Clarence? 
Well, he was referring to all the advocates of the uh, no-fly zone, including uh, Trump and uh, 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 various others. Uh, Trump's not that? there. He's referring to Christie. Trump's not oh, Christie, in the no-fly right. zone. Oh, right. Good, good correction, right. Pat. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Now that you're but, uh, corrected, you want to answer the question? Yeah. He's talking about Christie. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and uh, Rand Paul is talking about, about the danger of, of a no-fly zone, being that it can put us into a direct confrontation with not only the uh, the Assyrian uh, Air Force, but the uh, Russian Air Force. And uh, there's there's inherent dangers in that kind of a situation. But, you know, what, what's interesting is uh, Rand Paul and uh, Jeb Bush are trying to be the grown-ups in the room at a place that doesn't want any grown-ups. It's really uh, gotten, gotten so there, there's a race to the bottom as far as who can be the most militant, yeah. who can be ready to, to take up arms the quick. Right. And all, you know, and that's Trump a won the debate position. for this reason, not because he's the best debater, but one, because he stepped out and said, he was asked, will you support the candidate? And he said, I'm a Republican, and win or lose, I'm going to support the Republican candidate in the fall. Huge round of applause. Secondly, he wins because he did not lose. Mm -hmm. There was no damage done to him at all. He does have all these facial expressions, which are very human and non, almost non-political. And for the first time, he said, uh, I, forthrightly, I, I will not I will run, not as, run, I will as, not a run party as an independent. To, and that, I bet caused, I mean, that is Who got to him? I think he got <laughs> to himself. No. no, that's not the Strange, first time. Range Priebus got oh, to him. come on. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> look, the You know how persuasive, persuasive race, race uh, is, though. Yeah, look, but let me tell you, the, the wise thing to do, and I will say I predicted that Cruz would not go after Trump, and Trump would try not, try not to get in the fight with Cruz, they are one and two. Cruz's strategy of not going after people, he's risen. Obviously, Trump's got to go down, but he doesn't want to be the instrument that brings right. him down or he brings himself yes. down. Yes, but point of clarity, this is not the first time Trump has said that he would support the nominee. He actually signed a pledge, but he's kind of dances away from it. Nobody right. fully he trusts it. The deal. So uh, <laughs> just, just pointing that out. <laughs> yeah, if anything, he's unpredictable. I mean, they can't take that to the yeah. bank. It was interesting seeing the RNC today trying to be very conciliatory towards Trump. Like, oh, fingers sure. crossed, yeah. fingers Look, crossed. You, you've got to have Trump's uh, people. Right. You can't win without Trump's right. people. No, you can't. Right. And you can't win if the regular Republicans leave. Christie's statement gave, <laughs> gave Rand Paul an opening for one of the best rejoinders of the night. If you're in favor of World War III, you have your candidate. Christie's readiness for brinksmanship with Russia made Trump look like the serious GOP candidate in the race. John, you follow that? I don't follow Yeah, I don't follow him that far as far as right. looking like, like the serious candidate yeah. in the race. But the no-fly <laughs> zone sounds very appealing on the face of it, but when you examine it, ISIS doesn't have any planes. Uh, Russia is over there also fighting ISIS, but yeah. with another agenda. Uh, and you don't want to kick off World War III by feeling you have to carry through on Start a threat. Shooting you shooting down you, Russian so, planes? I mean, it, well, it, it, and you have to have that ground troops insane. to defend it. it. It's, it's, I think the right. consensus might move now towards the, the idea of a no-fly zone in Western Iraq with the authority of the Iraqi government, the support of the Iraqis and the Russians. Who's Under flying? That, okay. In Who's Western, Western Iraq. Yeah. Who's and flying in Western Iraq? Right. Yeah. No, everyone. Good well, point. the United States is dominant. <laughs> Who there, else is flying there? The Iraqis. I mean, the well, Iraqis. Well, that's, have a that's there. Right. Right. No, I know. But if you have, but you can have it. What well, my point is, you can have a safe harbor, right? The no-fly zone is just not. It's not about planes. It's about no planes, so you, that people you, on the okay, ground are safe. Okay, hold on. NSA, NSA spotlight. We are now at a time when we need more tools, not less tools. And that tool we lost, the metadata program, was a valuable tool that we no longer have at our disposal. Question, are we back into security versus privacy? I ask you, uh, Pat. Um, uh, yeah, we are. We, but we are more in terms of what, how Cruz voted and how... Yeah, it's deep <laughs> in the weeds. Called, <laughs> and you're deep in the weeds and, right. you know, and both of them made their positions clear. And, you know, Cruz made a mistake, and what you call him, uh, Rubio made a mistake on immigration. But neither of them would make that mistake again. But in the face-off between the two of them, I thought Rubio was doing exceedingly well early in the debate, but clearly he was under duress. Mm -hmm. The later it went on, and I think Cruz won the exchange, especially on the immigration and amnesty issue. He kept pounding it again right. and well, again and again. Because Cruz tied Rubio to Senator Schumer, Schumer uh, and, you know, Democrats. Oh, wow. and, and I think this is new information probably for a lot of voters. Not everybody knows what the Gang of Eight was, <laughs> what this immigration bill was, mm -hmm. what his role was. I mean, you hear, okay, he flip-flopped, but, you know, so I, I think uh, Cruz probably drew some blood on that. But why the two of them are going after each other, they're just now giving a 
clear uh, track to, to, to Trump. No, 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 uh, what so, they want is they're in yeah. the same lane. You gotta clear one of them out yeah. before you get to the yeah, main guy. They might, Trump is they the might do each other, right. they, might, well, they might be a, su a suicide uh, pact well, if the two of them look, go after each other so aggressively. But one of them's gotta win to get right. into the finals. Okay, the WWW. I wanted to get our brilliant people from Silicon Valley and other places and figure out a way that ISIS cannot do what they're doing. You talk freedom of speech, you talk freedom of anything you want. I don't want them using our internet to take our young, impressionable youth. Question, why was Trump the only GOP candidate to discuss winning the fight with ISIS by trying to win hearts and minds, by denying ISIS its ability to manipulate social media. What do you, I think what Trump is saying is, look, we've got these websites and all these things that going on that are going after these impressionable kids and persuading them to go over there and getting them to kill people. Let's use our technology, go in, and if we have to, shut down those websites. It's like shutting yeah. down a yeah. Nazi newspaper. Yeah, but, right. But, but, well, but right now, is they, he going to shut down the First Amendment right. also? Well, look, uh, I mean, but you're going to let, let terrorists go not, have free use of the Excuse me. Uh, the let world, let, let Alan in. Hurry the up, The president Alan. has been dealing with this, talking to the heads of all of these sites. Hillary Clinton just announced it. This is not, you know, a new revelation that you have to get the cooperation of the people running these sites. Twitter shuts down these sites all the time and then they pop and up. So there has to be more uh, coordination to see what more can be done. Nobody's disagreeing with that. And also Carly Fiorino also did have a, a pretty long statement about how she would tap talent here and she has a pretty good understanding of the technology one, beyond all yeah. this stuff. One, one so this is not, idea, one this is not a Trump uh, you know, singular idea. Yeah. Very, very quickly is that though some of the in intelligence community and law enforcement are actually rather those websites stayed online because they can see who's visited them yeah, and so then track them. Right. That's right. right. I mean, I mean yeah. all Trump did was once again show he doesn't doesn't understand the internet. Right. He, okay. I mean, at, at least he didn't, he didn't say let's get let's talk to Bill Gates about shutting down I the love internet the fact like he said before. But but the, but it doesn't matter because facts don't matter with Trump. What matters is he got the right attitude you, you and are, his you supporters. You're the reason Trump is doing well. Thank you. you. That's right. That's mainstream right. Mainstream media. Everything That's right. he says is bad. That's right. Well. And, 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 okay. And so it doesn't matter if Trump's <laughs> ideas are developed or not. Just the fact that he targets oh, the internet, the media, ahead, whatever. Go I go love the way he letter. refers to it as our internet. It yeah. reminds me during You're the right. first Gulf War when they used to say, what is our oil doing under their sand? Well, he thinks that <laughs> okay, <laughs> muddy the waters. He was fighting to grant amnesty and not to secure the border. I was fighting to secure the border. I have never supported legalization and I do not intend to support legalization. Question, how damaging were Cruz's attacks on Rubio's support for amnesty for illegal aliens. John, you could see it from Rubio's face. Early on when the exchanges were going on, Rubio was grinning and laughing, gonna come back at him. Here you can see from what you just put up there, a little measure of worry on his face about what is being said. As you mentioned, I think Cruz drew blood in the exchange on amnesty and yeah. immigration in the Republican Party. The thing is, uh, Rubio's really gotten a free ride of his so-called uh, flip-flop on this, on this issue. And uh, I, I think he doesn't know how to handle it because he doesn't want to disqualify himself from being a general election candidate. Right. Because if you're in a general election, we're not all talking about amnesty for illegal aliens. We're talking about, let's figure out what we do about immigration yeah, reform for people who have been living among <laughs> us and doing lots of jobs and working for us. It's a very different attitude, and he's trying, it's a, it's a balancing act for him. Twice in this debate, Governor Christie accused President Obama and Hillary Clinton of, quote, betraying the country. Why the harsh tone? <laughs> I think, you know, because what, what, he's trying to be Mr. Thing. Tough Guy going against uh, Trump. And he's, mean, trying uh, to use, he's also trying to usurp some of Jeb Bush's support. He's trying to say, look, I'm the establishment candidate if, what, for whatever reason, Marco Rubio implodes because of the amnesty issue. They're jockeying. It's getting to the end time. You have to roll the dice. You have to be aggressive. He wants waves. He wants news. He wants momentum. But, I, you know, again, I think yeah. at this you point know, it becomes... I, I really how is he theater. gonna? Do, wait a minute. How is he going to do in Iowa and New Hampshire? He's I think New, he, New, New Hampshire Trump. he can do better, but Iowa he's going to really struggle. Who, Trump? No, no, Christie. No. Oh, Christie is I, Christie's nowhere in Iowa. He's betting right. everything on New Hampshire. Trump, you, I'm talking what, about Trump. Well, oh, Trump, 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 Trump will come in first or second in Iowa right. and mm -hmm. probably first in New Hampshire as of now. But right. Christie, what Christie is doing, he's going all out in the hawk line, the toughest guy, I'm going to kick 
Putin around. We're going to, you know, do this to, and I, you know, and I think he, I believe he went, I was jolted when he said he's going to, I'm going to shoot down Russian planes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was, I've never heard a presidential candidate he say something uh, like that. Called President Obama a feckless weakling. I mean, I, know, I, I, I was uh, thinking of, uh, of uh, him uh, down the beach after yeah, hurricane, I, right? yeah, yeah, I was <laughs> thinking of what kind of words I would use to describe Christie. I'm not going to repeat them here. <laughs> Yeah, but how accurate right have ahead, they been? <laughs> uh, was it below the belt for Hugh Hewitt to ask Ben Carson, quote, just to be clear, you're okay with the deaths of thousands of children in airstrikes against ISIS? That was silly. Hmm? There's no one's calling. No one's calling for no that. We have, that. We have yeah. JDAMs, which are targeted by satellites. These debates are these debates are a test of how well you answer the question. Uh, 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 out there on foreign up, affairs in general. Thought out there that I think for which there was no justification. Now, if you went after Cruz, who said we're going to make the sand Cruz glow, yeah. say what do you have That's in mind? Right. How do you make the sand glow other than with atomic weapons? Right. Right. Well, yeah. mm -hmm. I, it's the carpet bombing. I mean, Cruz is saying we should yeah, carpet well, bomb, and, and 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 there are people. These are these are these are cities. You can't selectively carpet bomb. There's, there's and I think uh, uh, Carson has signed on to that. So okay. you know, it was a crudely worded question. And there's uh, an question. image that came out yesterday, actually, of a uh, two young Syrian children that, and it had been set up by an NGO, but they were on a desolate street that had been blown apart. Mm -hmm. Their parents had been killed by a Russian bomb. That is not the United States. The United no. States prides itself on being the most capable it, military it force, but also it, just, well, it was uh, before, okay. okay, so it was World the United War, States, but it's not. Question. If you take a look at Dresden, yeah. hello, I know. Hello, hello. Yeah. Uh, exit but not question. Anymore. After the Las Vegas debate, is Trump still the GOP front runner? Yes or no? Uh, he is, and I think Cruz is probably still second. Uh, well, he's he's the front runner nationally, but he's second in Iowa. But uh, you know, picky picky. I, I would I would refer to him as the Republican front runner, and I think that's how Hillary should refer to him. Don't use his name; just say the Republican front runner. Everybody knows who she means. He is the front runner, but I think it ultimately it's going to come down to Rubio versus Cruz. Yeah, he's still a front runner, but it's also this is a new phase of the campaign that we're moving into now. Uh, voters are starting to get engaged. Uh, uh, Iowa is what seven weeks away. It's uh, uh, we're in a situation now where people are starting to take things seriously and starting to learn information they didn't know before. Mm -hmm. And we saw that Trump uh, once again was not as uh, as astute about international relations and defense issues yeah. as Cruz and some others. So Pat's right. The, uh, it's the people who are the potential second placers who are are, are potential potentially moving up into first uh, on the basis of this debate. Yeah. Have you, uh, are you inclined to read polls? I'm inclined to read polls? Yeah, I wake <laughs> up with them every day. I go right to uh, real uh, politic, and uh, that's how I get my eyes open. Doesn't it come into play when you evaluate the question that's been thrown out to the group here? Yeah, well, well Trump mm -hmm. is 20, 23, 24 right. points ahead, even yep. in the even in respected in. polls. It's going to be very, very tough, I think, to... Even if he, let's suppose somebody beat him in New Hampshire and he, he got beaten in Iowa, yeah. he still is extremely strong, you know. But uh, he is, he is, uh, has fallen behind uh, uh, Cruz, Cruz in, in Iowa, Iowa. Uh, by the Des Moines Register. They're, and they're and uh, Cruz Iowa will get a bump. Cruz accurate. will get a bump going into New Hampshire, but that's going to wipe out other folks. Maybe Christie, probably Bush. Mm -hmm. I think it gets, it looks now to me like it goes down to almost a two man race unless Rubio, Ru, excuse me, Rubio right. can break in there. And this is what Trump it. said. I don't want them using our internet to take our young, impressionable youth. Have you thought of that, Pat? No, uh, I mean, I think Trump? it's a point. Look, mm -hmm. he is not deeply schooled in the internet as is Carly Fiorina and the rest of it. But the fundamental point comes across. We all understand it. If people are using this to convince young, impressionable people to go over and into Syria and then come back and kill us, let's take a good look at that thing and shut down the enemy websites. I mean, Which we do, and, but th right. then they open up a That's different right. site okay, uh, very know. quickly. Uh, so you hear that? You hear that? Right. He's right on the money here. He's right on the money. They it's do, a constant and then you they shut, open up another site. Well, you shut those down, too. Right. Now, well, it's a, it's well, a constant cat and mouse You can't game. keep up with it. Right. Right. What do you get? Do you give you, up? Can you keep up with it? No. But you, but what are you that? supposed what to give up? No. That's the problem. No, no, That's no, the problem. Nobody's giving, giving up. up. Huh? Nobody's giving up, but one yeah. side is pretending like nothing is being done because mm. of the feckless weakling in the White House, when in right. fact a lot of this is being done. <laughs> Issue two, adios socialism. Looking at these results, we are here with morals and ethics, he says, to recognize these adverse results, to accept them, and to tell our Venezuela that our constitution and democracy have triumphed. 
Recent legislative elections in Venezuela deserve analysis here at home. A conservative-moderate alliance won at least 110 seats in the National Assembly, twice as many as the Socialists, and will exert major influence on policy. Its key aims are releasing political prisoners, reducing Venezuela's 100% plus inflation rate, and addressing massive goods shortages. Still, the election is a clear rebuff to the so-called Chavismo policy of President Nicolas Maduro, instigated by flamboyant former President Hugo Chavez, who died of cancer in 2013. President Maduro has used Venezuela's immense oil wealth for redistribution and government patronage. But in recent years, low oil prices have stripped the government of revenue. But this isn't the only recent victory for South American conservatives. Last week, Argentina voted to elect a former banker, Mauricio Macri, to replace left-wing populist president, Cristina Kirchner. Is South American socialism dead and buried? How about you, Clarence? Well, I would say no. Uh, it's uh, certainly uh, been knocked back on its heels right now, but uh, there's an old saying that uh, Latin American politics are an argument between elites over how to treat the poor. And they constantly swing left and right uh, historically. And uh, right now it's hard times for socialism. Uh, uh, with Venezuela, of course, the collapsing oil price, prices are the big uh, reason why that, that government is in trouble. And they were too reliant on oil in the first place, along with too much corruption in the government. Uh, so there's a backlash. And there have been a uh, similar kind of a backlash in Argentina against the the, uh, the, the right at this juncture, but the, the left can come back later. Go the ahead. challenge here is that, you know, you see here that this is the rawest element of socialism in terms of kleptocracy, in terms mm -hmm. of you know, Chavez crazy, Maduro right. continuing on, corruption, a lack of toilet paper, lack of medical supplies, great reporting from Venezuela, lack of basic goods, toiletries, people queuing for hours, That's and right. it has utterly failed, and that is the repudiation now that we see. Issue three, counterfeiting in China. On paper, Flaming Lee was a China-based female investigator for a Swiss technology company titled ABB, Asia Brown Boveri. Miss Lee's role was to prevent Chinese criminals from counterfeiting ABB's circuit breakers. Unfortunately for ABB, Flaming Lee was actually a double agent who was selling counterfeit circuit breakers herself. Lee's story is just one example of China's growing counterfeiting industry. This week, the Associated Press reported that China-based counterfeiting has become an industry and is now counterfeiting Western products, including, quote, auto parts, pharmaceuticals, personal care products, and electrical components, unquote. And like Miss Lee, many anti-counterfeiting investigators are corrupt, then falsify reports of raids and seizures to placate their Western bosses. And in China, protected by vested criminal interests, many counterfeiters remain beyond the reach of the law. This reality was discovered the hard way by ABB when it was fined by Chinese authorities for pursuing legal remedies in court. Question, should we fear Chinese exports, Tom? Well, look, Chinese, China has a, a problem in the sense they're being undercut by nations like Vietnam with wage costs. Uh, but China, this is the, the great challenge, I think, and I think it reflects why China will not ultimately overtake the United States is because of things on the rule of law, reliability of <coughs> products. Now, as China gets into the more developed economy state with those internal pressures, there, people will simply stop buying Chinese now, products. This reflects, John, the stupidity of the Republican Party, which is responsible for MFN, opening up China, all these trade deals. They are dumping this garbage counterfeit in the United States because, as Ronald Reagan said, they are communists and they reserve to themselves the right to lie, cheat, and steal. That's who you're dealing with. It's not a partner like Canada or Great Britain. 
What about well, I don't think something cor- new? Yeah, that's what just what I was going to say. Corruption yeah. in China is not something new, and products that are faulty coming over here, whether they were the toys or infant formula or whatever it is. Actually, we've sent some infant formula over there that's had a problem. And pharmaceuticals, they can manufacture them much cheaper. Mm-hmm. And uh, the argument in this country is you can't you can't trust them, and I think that's probably correct. But in the new trade deal, the TPP, oh, uh, one of the president's arguments for that is you got to write some rules of the road. Road or China, you know, and really go, is rampant with this kind of behavior. Well, you've got something to enforce right. as long as you've got rules. Right. If you don't have rules, exactly. then you just have chaos. But the fact is that the Chinese mm-hmm. have been developing a fantastic above ground and underground economies at the same time for decades, ever since mm-hmm. the, uh, the declaration that, that ca- capitalism is glorious uh, uh, back in the, uh, what, uh, about 1980. Let's uh, talk about nuclear power plants, all right? Okay. One of my favorite topics. China has <laughs> counterfeited parts used in American nuclear power plants. They've been discovered by inspectors in the U.S. Mm. And they inspect nuclear power plants, obviously. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, none have yet caused a reactor problem. <laughs> well, that's, isn't that <laughs> fortunate? Three Mile you know? Island might make you look a second time at MFM. Yeah, isn't also, that maybe they do a very good job of manu- manufacturing these parts, but you uh-huh. have to you know, bring it out in the open and have it inspected. In that clip that you had, they referred to their, they answered to their Western bosses. So is this controlled out of the U.S.? What, uh, I think what the issue is that we have, there are Western companies that are relying upon Chinese agents uh, to try and make sure counterfeiting doesn't happen. But then I right. see. Counterfeit heparin uh, sold in the U.S. caused 350 hospitalizations with severe damage to patients, including 81 deaths worldwide. Right. Chinese counterfeiters fake the ingredients in many supplements as well as prescription medications. Well, we need to ask why do people go overseas for prescriptions in the first place? But part of this has to do with the high medical costs here. Right. But there are ways of enforcing that, uh, just like any other pharmaceuticals, or, yeah. or you, you know, folks who go, go up to Canada what to, to, to buy drugs. The producers should, uh, you put them out of business. Actually, yeah. should uh, Chinese imports be temporarily banned until China oh. puts in place effective anti-counterfeiting and safety rules, that's yes or no? John Trump's going to deal with right, this problem. I was going to say, no, that, that's, a, that's a Trumpian proposal. <laughs> Out of time. Bye-bye.